panel. I'm your moderator, Bobby Del Rio. If you were here uh, two hours ago, you saw me on crutches, no less. Um, we have a really talented panel here. We have uh, filmmakers. Can't hear. You can't hear me? Okay, so I can. I, no, I'll, be, I'll do this. I can do this. I went to theater school. Uh, I do not have a microphone, but I have a microphone inside me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Woo! All right. Yes. Uh, they all have mics because they are more important than I am. They are, yes, no, yes. If you knew me, you would know how true that statement is. They are talented Asian filmmakers from different generations. I am a meager programmer with a broken foot. Um, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna have a really interesting conversation talking about uh, sort of different perspectives, uh, different levels of experience, different generations, uh, being an Asian filmmaker in Canada. Uh, so we'll just go uh, starting from Faisal and they'll introduce themselves, uh, just tell you a little bit about the kind of work that they do. Okay, great to start. Um, my name is Faisal Lechmedio. I am a writer-director. Um, I started in documentary, and I uh, directed a feature film called My Cultural Divide. It uh, took place in Bangladesh and was about such of labor. I moved on from documentary. I work as an editor still, as in documentary, but I've also uh, been focusing on writing and directing myself in fiction. I um, have made several short films, one won a Writers Guild Award, and then I also uh, did a program called the Diversity uh, Screenwriter Program that from CTV and the Writers Guild, and uh, through that program won it and ended up writing, well, being a story editor on a show, a CTV show called The Listener for their season four. Um, and I continue to work as a, as a writer now. Hi, um, I'm Amanda Joy, I'm a second generation Asian Canadian filmmaker. I started off as an actor and then kind of segued into writing just through happenstance. I have a, from my background in psychology and sociology in school, so, you know, education, thumbs up. Um, <laughs> so uh, I've created a couple films, I've had some in uh, international film festivals, and I currently work in television. I actually created a show about second generation Canadian in development right now with the network. And um, I'm Jag Harmer. Um, oh, sir? Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm Jag Harmer. I, um, well, you'll be seeing my film in a bit. I uh, am the writer, director, and the producer of Dowry. Um, and as I did a couple short films um, that are now being used as educational tools around the world. Um, my background um, is not in film, it was in psychology, um, and yeah, and that's, that's me. I'm Keith Block, and um, I have been making films for a long time, uh, probably more than 40 years, longer than I care to recall. Um, I guess when I was a teenager, um, a Super 8 film that I made won a award in Amsterdam, a UNESCO award, and then that kind of got me in the industry, and I did go to film school, and um, uh, so I, I actually work in experimental films, um, drama, so I'm a writer-director, and a little film that I made won, uh, no, didn't win, sorry, was nominated for a Gemini for Best Short Drama, and I've had a Two films at TIFF, two features at TIFF, an experimental feature and uh, a dramatic feature. And, a show. Um, and I'm making, currently I'm working with the National Film Board on a film for the first time I've worked for the uh, NFB, so it's a uh, new thing for me. I've decided I'm going to share the microphone. It's very significant to all of your lives. Uh, okay, so 
Asian filmmaker. What's that like? Anyone? I think it's the same as being any filmmaker, but because we have such a, such a specific background, it gives us the opportunity to create diverse stories and to bring a voice into the media that we don't normally see in the mainstream. I know from my experience as being second generation and being Asian Canadian, um, it's, it's allowed me to tell, to tell stories that I feel are universal, that have, that have universal themes, family and everything, but to bring that special flair from our community to it so that we can, um, so that we can bring ourselves but also other audiences in as well. Um, I, from my perspective, I, I, I agree with what Amanda was just saying. I think that it's important that we, we bring those things in. I, when I started my career, I, um, I mean, quite frankly, I was making awful films. And I, I had just gotten out of film school and I um, was trying to find myself. Um, more than just finding myself as a filmmaker, but as a person. And I think when I started focusing my art on work that was connected to something connected to my heritage, something connected to my background, I started to find that voice. So I think that was important for me. I think it's important for every, whether they come from a diverse background or Asian background or not, to figure out um, who they are as a human. And I, of course that has a lot to do with who our parents are, who our grandparents are, where, where does that, where the, do our, where do the stories that we heard when we were children, where do they come from? And that's my perspective. For me, I, uh, I, I haven't been in film for a very long time. Um, this is my first feature. Um, and my experience is that it's a very passionate community. They want to be seen on screen. They want their issues shown. They, um, they want the dialogue. Um, and my experience being on set and, and working with cast and crew, they all want to be involved. Um, so, so far, I've had a pretty good experience being a filmmaker uh, as a South Asian woman? Um, for me, <laughs> um, I, I'm going through a lot of changes. It's interesting to hear what Faisal said. Um, and um, because when I started, um, you know, I, I, as a member of the Directors Guild over a feature film, I had my life threatened because one of the drivers just didn't like me, and he wouldn't take any instructions from me, and um, you know it wasn't a good situation, um, and that kind of got me thinking about making films in my community, which I did, and um, it was kind of like uh, very, it's like coming home again, and um, and now, um, and especially since no one else was doing it at the time. But now, and now I'm, I'm kind of seeing that as kind of like, I don't want to be thinking about those kind of um, identity politics as much, and it's kind of like um, a loss of innocence, and I'm trying to get back to where I was a long time ago, and just, um, you know, think those universal stories that Weissel's talking about. Um, so, all of you on the panel know on the audience don't. I'm also a filmmaker myself, um, but I also used to work as the Canadian Feature Film Programmer for the Real World Film Festival for five years. Uh, I no longer do that, but I, I somehow still at this event, seven years in a row, woo -hoo! Um, But I will say this, so in my experience at Real World and just being in the industry, I actually haven't seen that many Asian filmmakers. Um, why do you think that is? Uh, we're still, we're still, we're, you know, we're still a minority in, in this industry. Um, as much as it's improved a lot, um, you know, um, we've really got to get out there and make films and support those who are making films. I think, um, I think it's so Bollywood, of course, has been around for a very long time, and um, I think sort of the offshoot of, of, of the big budget films is uh, the indie films. 
the indie films. And uh, I, I think it's, um, it's a growing trend now. People want to see real stories. And uh, I, I think um, over the last few years, um, we are seeing more and more films you know, in festivals like Real World, et cetera. Um, yeah. I think um, over the years as the industry's been developing, there haven't been as many um, opportunities and there's definitely been some structural um, hindrance on people from our community succeeding. But I think nowadays, I mean it's certainly not perfect yet, but I think there's a lot more opportunity, especially in the age of YouTube when people are able to make their own films and their houses for very little money. You are seeing a lot more diversity on screen and seeing filmmakers and and the film industry kind of embrace what they're seeing online, which is that people want to hear diverse, unique voices um, no matter what color their skin is. That hasn't, that hasn't been the case in years prior. There hasn't been that awareness, I don't think. So Bobby, when you, when you say that, you mean you're obviously meaning specifically you're not seeing a lot of Asian Canadian or a Asian American, right? Because obviously there's tons everywhere else. Okay. Um, I was just having this conversation, right? Just before this panel, there was another event at the CBC, um, and we were talking mostly about writing um, and writing rooms and representation in writing rooms, and um, and the difficulty there is because it, it, perhaps many people here don't realize, but it's in in the television world, people get together in groups and they they write the television shows, and very often those shows um, those rooms are very white. Um, very rarely do you see people of color, um, and there are women represented, but not enough. Um, so it's it's a difficult thing, and there's it's it's a bit of um, like a seesaw in a way. There's just so few people on that uh, on the top. Um, that are, are bringing in people of color or bringing in people from Asia, people from wherever, and women into those situations that it's, um, it makes it difficult to find yourself in a place where you're actually making money. And, and, and as a result, um, because there's so few opportunities, I think that a lot of parents, let's say when their kids are saying, oh, I'd like to go to film school or I would like to go to so-and-so, if they're a first generation immigrant, family, um, I think very often they'll be heavily dissuaded um, from doing that. And for good, I understand there's, there's very good reasons for that, but that's what the fact of the matter is. So there's less people who are trying to do that job because it's hard and they're, because there are barriers. I think that's why we're seeing less people doing it. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the writing room issue. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I, it's something I definitely wanted to bring up. So for anyone who doesn't know, I mean, anecdotally, I would say 95% of all the television writers who are employed, especially, definitely in Toronto, I think pretty much across Canada, though, are Caucasian, which, which is, you know, a little suspicious, I, I think, right? Because there's actually quite a lot of writers from multicultural backgrounds, and it's like the presence in, in these writing rooms, and these are the most lucrative writing jobs in the industry, uh, there's so there's so few opportunities that it j just seems like it has to kind of be on purpose, right? Can we just talk about that a little bit? 